If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. Words taken from our Holy Gospel today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today, let us ask our souls, whose glory do you seek? Whom do you glorify? Our Lord Jesus Christ tells us today, If any man keep my word, he shall not see death forever. We do well to ask ourselves, which words are we supposed to keep, or which are most important? And how then do we keep them? For Christ says many things in his discourse today that we would like to say when we find ourselves contradicted by others, that we would like to apply to ourselves in our own defense. But how pure is this motive? Do we wish to speak like Christ, or is the defense of our own good name our top priority? So often, we reach out and take up Christ's words when they serve us, that is, when they defend us, when they make us look good and our enemies look evil. Is this why God has given us mouths and tongues, our own defense and glory? How then do we conform our speech to Christ? Let us listen a little to what St. John Chrysostom has to say on this matter. He says, For this end, God gave us speech and hands and feet and strength of body and mind and understanding that we might use all these things both for our own salvation and for our neighbor's advantage. If I say, Tabitha, arise. I merely speak Christ's words. But much more, if being reviled, I bless. If being despitefully used, I pray for him that doeth despite to me. Our tongue is a tongue imitating the tongue of Christ if we speak those things which he wills. But what are the things which he wills us to speak? words full of gentleness and meekness, even as he also himself used to speak, saying to them that were insulting him, I have not a devil. And again, if I have spoken evil, bear witness to the evil. If thou speak in this way, if thou speak for thy neighbor's amendment, thou wilt obtain a tongue like that of Christ. Note well the motive he points out, not for our glory, but for our neighbor's good ought we to speak so. He continues, For what is more lovely than a mouth that knoweth not how to insult, but is used to bless and give good words? But if thou canst not bear to bless him that curses thee, hold thy peace and accomplish but this for the time, and proceeding in order, and striving as thou oughtest, thou wilt attain to that other point also, and wilt acquire such a mouth as we have spoken of. But what is the alternative? What if we should wish to use our tongue otherwise? St. John tells us, Let us see how a devil's mouth is made, that we may never frame that. How then is it made? By curses, by insults, by envy, by perjury. For when anyone speaks the devil's words, he takes his tongue. What kind of excuse then shall we have, or rather, what manner of punishment shall we not undergo? When this our tongue, wherewith we are allowed to taste the Lord's flesh, when this, I say, we overlook, speaking the devil's words, Thus far, St. John Chrysostom. You say, and rightly so, but it is so hard to do this. How do we make a response to those that slander us and damage our reputation in word or in deed without attacking them, without trying to raise ourselves above them? For we know that is not love of neighbor. Let us take this as our first step, then, before we seek to defend ourselves, 
Let us utter these simple words in our heart and meditate long upon them before making our response. I seek not my own glory, and if I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. Let us teach our soul to say these words first, before all else. Indeed, these are the words of Christ that he wishes us to make our own above all others. It is one thing to take up Christ's words in our own defense, but every time we do so, we risk pursuing our own glory. How much better would we be if all of our words spoke that one simple sentence given us by our Lord? I seek not my own glory. This makes perfect sense for how empty is the glory of man. How much more empty is a man's self-promotion? We wish to defend ourselves, but why? To gain the praise of men? Men who so often praise what is blameworthy, who blame what is praiseworthy. Can a man by his praise make what is bad good? Can he by his blame make what is good evil? He cannot. If the praise of men is so empty, how much more empty is our own self-promotion? How often are we wrong about ourselves? And how tempted are we to see ourselves as Christ in our own story, persecuted unjustly by our enemies? If we are so busy seeking our glory, our own defense, how will we ever know if others persecute us justly? Or, if they do so unjustly, if they are God's own means or our chastisement. So often, we should like to pray to God, prove my cause against this godless nation. Let God arise and my enemies be scattered. Let them that hate me flee from before my face. But if we should ever find ourselves praying thus, let us listen carefully to our good Lord's response. If you let your own tongue rest a little, to offer it to him, will he not put these words upon it instead? If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. I seek not my own glory. How should we then respond to the man, overcome perhaps by his passions, who stands before us accusing us and breathing out threats, who defames and slanders us? Let us listen again. St. John Chrysostom. Control thyself, he says. For what sufferest thou like what the Lord suffered? Wast thou publicly insulted? But not like these things our Lord suffered. Art thou mocked? Yet not thy whole body, not being thus scourged and stripped. And even if thou wast buffeted, yet not like this, A disciple betrayed him, the rest forsook him and fled. They that had been benefited by him spat at him. The servants of the high priest smote him with the palm of the hand. The soldiers buffeted him. They that passed by jeered him and reviled him. The thieves accused him, and to no man did he utter a word, but by silence overcame all instructing thee by his actions that the more meekly thou shalt endure, the more wilt thou prevail over them that do thee evil and wilt be an object of admiration before all. For who will not admire him that endures with forbearance the insults he receives from them that are using him despitefully? Thus far, St. John. What do we fear, then, from these slanders of evil men? He who is judged by others to be a bad man, while in actuality a good man, is in no way hurt, for he remains good. It is those, on the contrary, who suspect him vainly and causelessly that do harm to themselves. 
Thus, we see how empty is worldly glory, all public esteem. And yet, how very often do we yearn for it? How much do we burn internally when we are slighted, treated unfairly, made to look defective in the eyes of others? But Father, you say, one must do something. May we never ever defend ourselves? You may so long as you do so without anger. Again, St. John Chrysostom tells us, it is impossible for one who is not angry to be self-condemned. For though it be necessary to retaliate, it is possible to do this without anger. And it were more easy and more wise than with anger, and to have no painful feelings. St. Francis de Sales, one of my favorite quotes, gives this advice, which I wish you to all make your own. If we are unjustly blamed, let us quietly meet calumny with truth. If calumny perseveres, let us persevere in humility. There is no surer shelter for our reputation or our soul than the hand of God. Let us serve him in good report and evil report alike with St. Paul. Of course, certain crimes, he says, so grievous that no one who can justify himself should remain silent must be accepted. Also, too, certain persons whose reputation closely affects the edification of others. In this case, all theologians say that it is right quietly to seek reparation. Thus far, St. Francis de Sales. Finally, as in all things, let us learn from the school of our Blessed Mother Mary. Does Mary, most glorious of all creatures, seek her own glory? What does she say on the contrary? My soul doth magnify the Lord. Why? Because he hath regarded the humility of his handmaid. She seeks the glory of the Lord, who hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble. Let us learn to glorify God with Mary. Only the humble soul can give glory to God. The soul full of its own justification and defense cannot, because it is too busy glorifying itself. And so we close one last time with the prayer, St. Alphonsus Liguri, to our Blessed Mother. O Mother of Mercy, since thou art so compassionate and hast so great a desire to do good to us sinners, and to satisfy our demands. I, the most wretched of all men, today have recourse to thy mercy, that thou mayest grant my requests. Let others ask what they will, health of body, wealth, or temporal advantages. I come to ask of thee, O lady, those things which thou thyself dost most desire of me, and which are most conformable and most pleasing to thy sacred heart. Thou who wast so humble, obtain for me humility and love of contempt. Thou who wast so patient in the difficulties of this life, obtain for me patience in things contrary to my wishes. Thou who dost, didst overflow with love to God, obtain for me the gift of a holy and pure love. Thou who wast all charity towards thy neighbor, obtain for me charity towards all men and especially towards those who are my enemies. Thou who wast wholly united to the divine will, obtain for me a perfect uniformity with the will of that God in all his dispositions concerning me. Thou, in a word, art the most holy of all creatures. O Mary, obtain for me the grace to become a saint, Thy love is unfailing. Thou canst and wilt obtain all things for me. Nothing, then, can hinder me 
from receiving thy graces, but my neglect to invoke thee, or my want of confidence in thy intercession. But thou thyself must obtain for me the grace to seek thee, and this grace of confidence in thy intercession. These two greatest gifts I ask of thee. From thee will I receive them. From thee do I confidently hope for them. O Mary, Mary my mother, my hope, my love, my life, my refuge, and my consolation. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.